Well, good morning or good afternoon whenever you are watching this. Hope this is a great experience for you. Well, welcome you as Brother Mark Booker and I start a new series called Cultural Issues, Biblical Answers. We'll look at things, hard subjects taking place in our culture today and, and what the Bible has to say about that. Not so much what we have to say, but what the Bible says. We're going to start off today looking at what the why we can trust the Bible and why it does speak to these issues. We'll be in John 17, verses 15 through 19, on the back of chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. First of all, John 17, verses 15 through 19, where Jesus prays on behalf of his disciples. So I do not ask you, Father, to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also sent them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify myself. They themselves may also may be sanctified in truth. Truth is a big thing that we're going to be facing in these cultural debates. And then Bacchick says, chapter 2, verses 1, I will stand on my guard post, station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch, see what he will speak to me, how I may reply when I am reproved. Then the Lord answered me and said, Record the vision and inscribe it on tablets. One who reads it may run. For vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens toward the goal and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it. It will certainly come, it will not delay. Behold, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him, but the righteous will live by his faith. Father, well, I want to thank you for those who are listening today. I pray that you will have something important to say to them, something of value to them in their relationship with you. Thank you for that in Jesus. Amen. Well, there's a lot of things I don't know, but I'm fearing if you got a train going, one direction on track, another train coming from the other direction on track. You're heading for a collision. It's going to be a train wreck. Can I have two trains going on two different directions on the same track? So, what we have today is culture and God in a train wreck. It's not that God's going in the wrong direction. The train is culture going in the wrong direction. It's going to crash. Now, I looked up and it says, to report culture, it says, culture is an umbrella term which encompasses the social behavior, institutions, and norms found in human societies, as well as the knowledge, beliefs, beliefs, arts, laws, customs, capabilities, and habits of the individuals in these groups. Get all that together and you have a culture that is ignorant of God's truth or is indifferent to God's truth, or it may be in opposition and rebellion to God's truth. Today's culture is bought into this thing called find your own truth. The biggest bunch of garbage you can find, but I mean, they, they say there's no absolute truth, and you believe what you want to believe, you live how you want to live, you decide for yourself. problem with that is culture. We, we're all interwoven together, and it does matter what we believe. It doesn't matter how we live. That's why we have laws to protect us against murder and things like that, because it does matter. The result is that we cannot work. It has not worked. It's a train wreck. And you see the results of this train wreck. Fractured homes and marriages. Uh, immoral and alternate lifestyles. Devalu devaluation of life. All these things are part but this train wreck is taking place in culture with God. Now, there must be a source of absolute truth or we're doomed. The Bible claims to be God's word. The Bible claims to be that source of absolute truth. Psalm 119, 160 says, The sum of your word is truth. In other words, you, if you take all of God's words, and you add them up, it, they come up equal to absolute truth. How can we believe that? Well, 
you won't find a more reliable source anywhere in the Bible. There's been over 1,500 year period by over 40 different authors coming from all walks of life. Shepherds, kings, uh, fishermen, they came from everywhere to be. Uh, farmers, they came they, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible for us. It's historically accurate. I mean, there's not been any historical problems with it. It's archaeologically accurate. Uh, some of the archaeologists will tell you there's never been an archaeological find yet to contradict the Bible. And yet, you bring all this together, it forms one complete story of God's grace and salvation changed life. Kicker for us is that many believe in the Bible, but they do not know how to meet God in the Bible. That, that, that is an issue, isn't it? They do not take to our they do not take time to listen to God when they open the Bible. Believing and knowing, trusting and living God's word is essential. Not being confused by culture or worse, compromising with culture. See, we can, we can hear God's word and not hear it. And the whole history of Israel, they kept God kept telling them one thing. They said they would do it, but they never did do it. They, they were not only confused about truth, but they compromised with cultures and brought them down. So, cannot be confused. But too, many, but too many people, they are confused about truth. So how do you meet God in the Bible? First of all, need to prepare time to meet with God by setting a time and place daily to read your Bible. Remember, back at I will stand on my guard post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will speak to me. You know, if you don't, if it's not a priority and you don't set a time and, and date uh, time to meet with God daily, it's not going to happen. To me, things are going to get in the way. If I I don't get up and get, have my time with God each morning in His Word. Too many things call for my attention. Too many things scream for my commitment. And it's just not going to happen. Set a time and place daily to read your Bible. It's no accident that my dad, one of the godliest men I've ever known, is godly because every morning he would get up and he would read his Bible, spend time listening to God and what God had to say to him. Let God speak to you. Uh, Habakkuk said, I will see what he will speak to me. God will speak to you, and God is speaking to you. The problem is, you say, I wish God would speak to me. We're well, probably not listening. You never open your Bible. Well, that's one thing you're not listening to. And you're probably not hearing God's voice in any other form or any other way. God speaks primarily to his word. And it's more important for you to hear from God than for God to hear from you. I'm saying it's not important for you to tell God how you feel and what you're going through. I'm just saying it's more important for God, for you to hear from God than it is for God to hear from you. Uh, once you, rec then when God speaks to you, record what he says to you. Uh, back said, then the Lord answered me and said, record a vision and inscribe it on tablets. Well, why? Because you don't, you don't remember hardly anything. I'm, I'm sorry. You may have one of the great memories of all time, but in 70, in 24 hours, you'll remember only about 10% of what you've heard. Did you realize that? Only 10% of what you hear in 72 hours. It's incredible, isn't it? To write down. I know when God gives me a thought, if I don't write down, I will forget it. To write down so I can go over what God's teaching me, what God's telling me. Then wait for God's revelation. Uh, back again said, he said, the vision's for the appointed time. It hastens toward the goal. It will not fail, there, though he tarries, wait for it. You know, God's not on our timetable. We're on his. God's never late. God's never early. He's always right on time. But we don't know what the time is. So you need to wait for God. Don't make any decisions until you know what God wants you to do. Don't do anything until you, you heard from God. And that's daily. And then you live by his word. Verse 4 said, Behold, it is for the proud one, his soul is not right within him, but the righteous will live by his faith. Romans ten seventeen says, Faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the word of Christ. Now, so you can't approach the Bible in the wrong way, in the wrong spirit. 
We, we should be, we should approach as men, women seeking God. We need to make it personal. So here's some questions that will help you make it personal. From, from what I read, what does this reveal about God? That is exaltation. The more you know him, the more you will praise him. One of the evidences of experiencing God is that you will magnify and exalt him. And the second question you look for is, what is God saying to me? That's confession. The need to turn to God, to get right with God, and to need God. It's not always negative. Sometimes God tells you something, you, you just want to confess your need to Him. Sometimes He tells you something, you want to confess your sin to Him. You want to know what God is saying to you. And the third question is, is there something God wants me to do? That's commitment, positive or negative. Does God want me to do something? Does God want me to give up something? Does God want me not to do something? What is it God's looking for out of me? You know, you, you leave that well. Say, what do you mean God's going to tell me what to do? Yeah, like, uh, let's say you're struggling with someone. You read God's word in Matthew 5, and he says, love your enemies. It's something God wants you to do, isn't it? Hard to do, but love your enemies. Is there something God wants me to do? The experience of God will always lead to serving of God. Next question is, is someone God wants me to share this with? See, we're part of fellowship, we're part of community, we're part of something bigger than us. So, something God wants you to share with someone else. Everything God gives you, he expects to use you to bless someone else. So think about who God is using you to reach with what he's revealing to you. Now, you need to have confidence in the Bible in order to ask these questions in order to go there. So there's four things I hope you know, know about the Bible that I have confidence in. First of all, it is infallible. It is without error. You say, well, what about, you know, they, they had copies and they hand copied and some errors got in there. Well, we have over 5,000 manuscripts of the New Testament. And, and some of them are so old that there's no copying mistakes. And I grant you, it could be some down the line, but by now we have all those mistakes pretty much covered and by, by, by theologians and stuff. So it's not an issue. Billy Graham said, it is man, not the Bible, that needs correcting. Don't worry about what's wrong with the Bible. Worry about what's wrong with you. The Bible does not make mistakes. God has preserved his word. He loves his word that much. Secondly, the Bible is authoritative. That means it's God's binding revelation. You're not free to pick and choose what you will believe. You're not free to pick and choose what you will do. See, why? Well, like, again, come back to love your enemy. Say, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. Well, that's not authority in your life. It's authoritative because you're going to answer someday for every decision you make. Also, it's inspired. The word inspired means God breathed. As God breathed his life into Adam, with his dust of the ground, so God breathes his life into his word. He's inspired. It's not written just by men. Holy Spirit breathed the life of God into men to write what God wants people to hear. So that's a very important. It's a living word. Hebrews 4, chapter 12, verse 12 says, Word of God is living and active. It pierces. It's a living word. That's why... Words that were written 2,000 years ago speak to us today. So you can read a verse 100 times in 101 time, 101st time, God will have something special to say to you because it's a living word. Now, time in God's word and commitment to God's word enable us to know what is true. And when we know what is true, then we can walk in truth. Walk in truth and we can live by his truth. Now, be certain of this. God wants you right in the middle of this cultural class. C class. To me, Christians want to avoid taking any kind of stand. But Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed not for us to be taken out of the world, but that we would not be like the world. He prayed the Father would send us into the world because we have a mission. And mission is not to, not to argue with culture, but to change culture. What changes culture? The Word of God, the Gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. That's why He wants us to be, He prayed for us to be sanctified in history, set apart 
belonging to him and belonging to his truth, living for him. Now, we're going to look to the Bible through this series, not to find our own truth, but to find God's truth. The Bible is our one sure guide in an unsure world. The more, the, the more you know the Bible, the less you will be led astray. The less you know the Bible, the more you will be led astray. Famous scientist Albert Einstein had trouble finding his way home, or trouble to find his way home. They did finding the, atom the key to atomic power. One night, as in deep thoughts, he rode the train that took him home each night. Collector came by, collect his ticket. Couldn't find his ticket. He went through his pockets, through his uh, coat and shirt and everything, or he could not find his ticket. Porter said, that's okay, Dr. Einstein. I know you ride this train every day. I will collect it tomorrow. Einstein replied, replied, that's fine for you, young man. But how am I to know where to get off the train without the ticket? Now, the Bible is our ticket to ride the train through culture now. You've heard the Bible said, I believe it, that sells it. I've heard that many times. The Bible says, the Bible said, I believe that sells it. That's not exactly true. The Bible says it. That sells it whether we believe it or not. I'm going to call you to know what the Bible says, to believe the Bible. Psalm 1989 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. God's word is settled. Settle in God's word. Learn the truth of God's word. Know the truth of God's word. Live the truth that you might understand what it means to take on culture. I hope you will commit yourself to reading of God's Word, knowing God's Word, sharing God's Word, standing on God's Word. Okay? God bless you.